A little over six months ago, I saw a video by NerdRage in which he was experimenting with solar panels in tritium. The idea really intrigued me, and I wanted to see if I could power some small devices with it. Right from the very beginning, my main goal was to try to create a 3D printed nuclear powered motor. I knew this would be difficult because prior to this, my best 3D printed easy spin motors required about one microamp of current to run. In the end, I was never able to get anywhere near that out of this radioisotope photovoltaic generator. It produced current in the nanoamp range. I knew it was going to be really difficult to pull this off, but I sure sounded optimistic when back at the end of 2016, I made the following statement. Now, I really enjoy challenges, and I have a lot of experience building small motors that run on microamps of current, sometimes even under one microamp. So I'm going to use every trick I know, as well as invent some new ones, and try to make a small motor that can be powered with this beta voltaic battery. Over the months that followed, I tried all kinds of ideas. My first idea was a rotor that had the tritium, the solar panels, and the coils all inside the rotor itself. And I was trying to use mercury switches to set up the switching action instead of a reed switch or a transistor. This was a really interesting idea and it turned out looking amazing, but it failed as a motor for this application. Later on, I went back to just a very simple motor design. Three magnets, three coils, very lightweight, simple, easy to try different coils on. I tried a lot of different coils, a lot of different wire gauges. I tried driving it with reed switches, uh, transistor-based circuits, similar to those found in the dancing uh, solar flowers, and uh, never really had much success with it in this basic configuration. But I went ahead and just kept on experimenting, kept on trying. I came so close to throwing in the towel so many times uh, with this. But in the end, I kept using this simple motor as a platform to test new ideas. Finally, after testing a lot of different configurations, I actually had some success. I was able to rotate the rotor very slowly, just running in the nanoamp range. As you can see here on this meter, the needle just barely bounces as the reed closes. I actually had to switch over to a digital meter to measure the current and the voltage. At this point, my motor was running on under 200 millivolts and under 20 nanoamps. This completely smashed all my previous records and allowed me to do some really cool experiments. This motor was so sensitive it would run on just the action of two dissimilar metals held in my hands. I also ran the motor just off ambient energy in my room. I put a metal ball on top of an insulator and then ran a wire down through a full wave rectifier to a ground connection. With just this setup, I was able to power the motor continuously. After discovering that I could run a motor on nanoamps, I fired up my Cetus 3D printers and started on a brand new design. I really wanted to up the RPM. I went back to the Easy Spin motor design with six coils and three magnets. I went with a smaller size magnet and readily available flat coils out of the solar dancing flowers. In just a couple hours, I was able to accurately and quickly 3D print all the parts for this new motor design. It would have been next to impossible to prototype this design without the use of 3D printers. And today for $299, it's amazing the finish and precision you can get on one of these Cetus 3D printers. I'm going to continue to make improvements and refinements on this basic design. And if there's enough interest, I'll release everything over at laserhacker.com in the near future. After so many failures and almost giving up on this project altogether, I'm really glad that I persevered through until I got it working. I used to think around one microamp was about as low as we could go on a motor like this, and now I'm really wondering how low can we really go into the nanoamp range on one of these type of motor designs. I guess there's only one way to find out. Let's all keep experimenting. Talk later.